Today's video is all about my 2023 office tour. My workplace is where I spend a lot of time as a software engineer, financial trader, video editor, and pretty much a hobbyist, you know, gaming and things like that. In this video, I'm excited to take you guys on a tour of my office and my desk and show you how I've set up my desk setup for maximum productivity and comfort. So I'll also be showing you guys some of my favorite tools and accessories to help me stay focused and inspired throughout the day. Don't forget, if you want to see any of the items that I have shown in this video, I'll leave them all linked below in the description of this video. I think you will enjoy this tour, so let's get into it. So this is my main desk. It's a Bacant 63 inch desk that I purchased from Ikea. It's a sleek and modern design that fits perfectly with my workspace aesthetic. One of the best features of this desk is that it is height adjustable, although I did not get the standing desk, which I believe I do regret. But this allows me to customize the height to my liking. It takes a little longer, but it still does it. So the centerpiece to my desk would be my M1 Mac mini. It has 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig um, SSD. The M1 chip provides amazing performance for anything I do through my coding, my video editing. The 16 gigs does allow me to have multiple browsers open. Like right now I can see I have eight windows open with another 10 that are uh, with another 10 tabs that are ready to be opened up. So with the work I do, 16 gigs is probably the minimum that would work for me. I am looking at upgrading this computer in the future whenever Apple announces their um, next version of the Mac Studio. Overall, I'm extremely happy with the Mac. I will probably never leave an, the Apple ecosystem. And I would definitely recommend the Mac Studio for those who are looking for uh, a powerful versatile computer so along with the actual computer i have software that i use that is equally as important for my trading i rely on the trading view to view my actual charts and then i trade uh using td ameritrade's thinkorswim platform and then for my video editing i use final cut pro i'm i'm really kind of biased to it because it's just so easy and simple to use and it's uh optimized for mac computers when it comes to coding i use vs code i have um along with my like my postgres databases that i have set up on my computer and then some other things i have the github uh disk platform that i use so and then also we'll talk about this later but i do have multiple monitors so i can have certain things on different screens depending on where i'm working or what i'm working on overall i'm extremely satisfied with the software that i use in my workspace i don't really see a need to upgrade anything i'll probably add on additional software in the future i'm interested in trying out the garage band apple has but we'll see about that so the next most important piece of my desk workspace would be my monitors so i have three monitors in total i have two 34 inch curved lg monitors and then i have one flat 34 inch um, lg monitor these monitors are great for gaming and provide an immersive experience with their curved design they're specifically helpful when it comes to my work, which often requires maybe six to 10 different window browsers open at the same time. So the monitors are all 4K HDR, and it does help enhance the visual quality of my work, making it easier to see colors, such as when I'm editing videos or just browsing on YouTube. In addition to the two vertical uh, monitors that I have, I mostly use those for um, just browsing, uh, video editing, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sorry, the horizontal monitors. The vertical monitor I use strictly for coding. When I'm trading, I'll put my thinkorswim on that monitor and I'll just, not landscape, but I'll portrait it. Like I can see all my different strikes and everything on there. It's much easier to see on the vertical monitor. Overall, I'm extremely happy with my setup, but there is one thing I am a little disappointed about. So the M1 Mac mini that I have, I can only use two monitors off of it. So that's one reason I will be upgrading eventually to the next, uh, the Mac studio or whatever apple releases that i decide to get and i believe on that one you can run maybe four five six monitors not really sure but i am interested so because of that i really use my main my vertical monitor as like a gaming monitor for whenever i want to get some real good competitive play in and i'll speak about my main gaming screen a little later but because of that i do have to plug and unplug a lot of the cords in the uh the bottom monitor so i really don't use it that much but aesthetics right so when it comes to audio and visual equipment i do have a few essential tools that i use to enhance my space for my audio speakers for the computer i actually use the creative pebble v3 bluetooth speakers i got these off of amazon these speakers are small and compact and they have a pretty good sound quality for the price that they that i purchased them for i've seen that they have a newer version that has the rgb lights at the bottom base of the actual speaker these speakers are perfect for just daily browsing and listening to my um 
my editing from Final Cut. Well, honestly, I leave them on 24 seven. I know that's bad to do. That's probably why I went through a pair of them already and had to order a new pair, but you know, they're nice. And then for my microphone, I'm actually using a Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. I've had this mic for a while and it's a high quality microphone that's perfect for recording audio for my videos. It has a directional pickup pattern that helps to isolate the sound, which makes for a cleaner recording. And then finally, the webcam I have is a Logitech Brio 4K. So it's a high quality camera that provides clear and detailed video, which is important for like video conferencing with work and meetings and different uh, Zoom sessions that I might get into. The 4K resolution also, it ensures that my video is really crisp. So like if they put me up on the screen at work in the conference room, my actual video of me is not all bunchy and crappy. I kind of, I care about that stuff. So I really love this camera. Also, it has a great microphone on the camera, which is somehow comparable to this Rode mic. No idea how they did that, but awesome. So in addition to my computer and my monitors, I do have some uh, peripheral equipment that really assists me even further. So for my mouse, I have the Logitech MX Master 3. This is probably the best feeling, best moving, most ergonomic mouse that I've used. It's also very durable. It has a USB-C uh, charger on it, quick charge. You can get to like 80% battery in like five or 10 minutes. And then also I have the Apple Magic 3 um, trackpad and I also have the keyboard. So let's say if I'm coding or editing in anything, I'll usually use my uh, MX Master Mouse with my right hand and I'll sort of gaze over I gloss over things for my left hand, increase the screen size, et cetera, et cetera. I really do love the two mouse combo. It took a while to get used to, but it's it, it really increases my um, efficiency when I'm doing things. So I also have a USB-C hub that's under my desk, it's Velcroed. It allows me to connect multiple devices to my computer using a USB-A, USB-C, it has lightning ports. I plug in my SD cards down there. And then I have a cable going to the back of my um, under desk where I have my computer actually mounted. It really increases the number of port options, port options that I have with the, um, with the Mac because it, it's pretty limited. Another reason I'm gonna look at upgrading the Mac. And then finally, I have about three arms from, um, vivo i have three arms going to all of my computers i love them i've had them the arms for years it took a while to actually figure out how to adjust the tension on the arms because i've never done it before but after i figured it out it's simple it's a breeze to do i know cable management is such a huge topic and everyone loves like talking about it over youtube and it's weird because i actually i despise by seeing cables like that's it's i don't know if it's a pet peeve or it's like it irks me to see cables and at first i was doing a great job with it like i had some um cable hiders and a bunch of ties and clips and velcro strips and everything for my cables but i have so many cables under my desk i just i kind of gave up and i'm going to start over when i make a new desk yeah, I got irritated and it was just, it's so much. So when it comes to my office chairs, I actually looked out thanks to my dad. His company at the end of a year, in like December, some year, I don't know, but they were giving away chairs. They weren't even giving them away. They were about to throw them away. And he saw two of them and he, he grabbed them for me. The real durable chairs, I'm not really sure of the name, heavy duty, they're, they have like 50 way adjustment. It's, they're awesome. Eventually, I do want to get one of those Herman Miller chairs and try those out. But for now, these these work pretty good. The only thing I don't like about them is they hold a lot of dust in the back. I constantly have to dust them with my little duster, but thanks to that. Another small thing I have on my desk that I really love is I have an RGB lit desk pad. It has different patterns, different light colors. You can script and flow and rainbow through it and everything. I got it off of Amazon, actually. It has a bit of personality to the room. It blends in with the lights and it matches the lights. And I didn't want one of those small, just mouse disc pads. I wanted like an entire, a real disc pad. I wanted an entire like half disc disc pad. That'll add a little flavor to the disc so it won't be so empty, I guess. And then speaking of more personal touches, I have a little uh, bear that says, I think it says number one dad that I got for Father's Day. My daughter got that for me. I love looking at it. It fits this little empty space that I have in my desk, so yeah. So my TV is probably my favorite thing 
in this office. I have a 48 inch LG C1 TV. It's an OLED and honestly in my opinion OLEDs are the best TVs that you can get right now unless you get like a micro LED but those are so expensive you never see them. The picture quality and the lights and the complete darkness and this TV is so amazing. It's very similar to the LG G1. It's just the G1 is slimmer. That's really the only difference. I believe it's the top TV out that you can get. And it's not even that expensive. It was, I believe this one was like 11, 12, 11 or $1,200. Honestly, the only thing that beats this TV, in my opinion, is the Z series, which is LG's 8K TV, but it's not cheap. But hopefully one day I can get one. So let's talk about gaming. So gaming is a huge part of my office space. It's something I do to sort of relax and I've been doing it for years. Like I've had all the systems, the PlayStation, PS2, the Game Boys, the Nintendos, the Xbox, the Xbox. I don't even remember all the names, the Xbox One. I had currently right now, I have the Xbox Series X. I'll be honest, it's a great machine, but I'm a little, I'm a little disappointed in the actual like video game developers because this thing runs at 4K 120. And I just, I feel like these video game developers aren't pushing the system to its limits. And that's what I want. So to record my actual gameplay footage, I have a Elgato 4K 60S Plus. So it's a video game capture device. It's honestly, it works perfect for me. So it's a standalone device. You just put an SD card in, hit play. I've had no problems out of it. I believe I've had it for maybe three, four, five years. Scratch that. I did have a little problem, with the, but that was my fault because I used a different USB-C cord that did not come with the actual device. So I used the cord that comes with the device and it'll work perfectly. And then to record the actual um, face footage, like what you're watching right now, I have a Panasonic GH5. It's the first, it's the Mark I. I think they released like a S version or S plus. I don't have that one, just the basic. I've had this camera for maybe five, six, seven, eight years. Whenever it first came out, that's when I purchased it. No problems, awesome quality, easy to use. I really love it. I am really, really, really interested in upgrading to get into the Sony cameras. As of right now, I want a Sony A7S uh, three, unless they come out with the four. I'm waiting on it. I'm praying for it. I just can't wait to see what that thing is going to do. And then also to record the audio, once again, I'm using my Rode VideoMic Pro. That's on a boom arm. I believe it's the, the Rode PSA boom arm. It's a great boom arm. I haven't had any problems with it. The tension adjustment, once again, when you, when you learn how to do the tension adjustment, it's easy. You know, you can move it as you wish. It stays right there. And then also on the, on the GH5, I'm using a 12 to 25 lens. I don't know the exact specific name of it but i will have that listed in the description i believe this is the best lens for my usage of it i have the camera right now it's about three feet away from my face maybe four and i have it zoomed in to about maybe 18 millimeters maybe 20 somewhere in that area and i really like the uh picture quality that i get from it to hold all of my actual footage from my sd cards I upload those to a Seagate expansion drive that I have. I have the six terabyte external hard drive. I know they make like eight, 10, 12. I believe it goes up into the twenties. I didn't really need that at the time, but I probably will upgrade to a larger expansion disc. Although I'm not really, I'm not really sure how long those last, but I'm going to upgrade one day. No problems out of it. I get great upload speeds. I actually run the cord straight through the Mac. I don't go through the hub. I get USB-C going to the Mac. So it's, I have great speed when transferring files over. So this is my secondary desk area. It's sort of a more chill, more relaxed spot for me to just, maybe I'll browse or I'll just look on the internet, look on YouTube. I'll write some notes out. I might trade some Forex over here. It just, it feels less like I'm about to work. So I like this desk. And plus, if I have someone come over, if somebody's like, I used to have uh, classmates that would come over and study, sit over there or et cetera, et cetera. When I do get another desk, I will put my larger desk in my little study area and I'll probably just, I'll get rid of that one. But on this desk, I do have a few small items or accessories over here. I have my printer, some office tools. I have my drones. I have, you know, little pencil holders. This stuff is kind of, you know, thrown all over the place, but it's, this is where they belong. And then above the desk, I have so many things I love about this office. This black glass 
um, board. It is just, it's so sleek and it ties in with all the other black accents and uh, devices and tables and couches that I have in the office. And then also on the actual blackboard, I use neon lighters or neon markers to write whatever I write on them. And then when I dim these lights down low, it shines sort of how you see the, um, this neon glow in the darkness that you see on this art piece we'll talk about in a few. It provides a sleek and stylish surface that allows me to stay organized and focused. I believe having a, a chalkboard or a glass board or something is essential, essential until to have it in your office. So yet again, another, this is the top three thing about my office. I have a full Sonos audio system. So I have the Sonos beam soundbar that's going that's uh, hanging from the actual my LG TV. Then I have a sub, the Gen 3 subwoofer. And then I have four of the Sonos One SL speakers. I have those hanging in the um, each corner of the room. Guys, when I say this system is the most immersive 3D sounding, it has the Dolby Atmos sound. It's, it is the best audio speaker system I've ever heard by far yeah it is a little on the pricey side but i have to shout out my um friend tyrell who told me to get this system you can pretty much put tons of these speakers throughout your house and you can connect them all on the phone or you can group certain rooms together they're extremely user friendly and i love that it has they have all have alexa built in so if like i'm in the other room i can just ask alexa something and i can turn the lights off in this room or you know and then you can easily switch between the audio um sources like I can just do it on my phone or I can go back to the Xbox or I can go back to the TV and awesome. Or I can play music throughout the house. I, I love these things, guys. And then in addition to the voice control, Sonos actually has a really good app. You can connect it to your Amazon Music, your um, Apple Music app or whatever app. And you can go through your songs and playlist on there. Another one of my favorite things about my office will be my lighting. So I have two different systems. We'll talk about the LifeX and then the other system that I have is Philips Hue. Me and my ex-girlfriend, we made, we saw this like cloud ceiling on uh, maybe Pinterest or Instagram or something. And we were like, let's try to make it. So we put white boards on top of the ceiling and we stapled them to the ceiling. And then we got these uh, LifeX light strips for the actual lighting. And we stuck those on there with the, uh, the sticky backs. And then for the clouds, I can't really remember what they're exactly called, but it's like a a cloudy something that we got from uh, Marshalls and we glued those up there with the, the little spray can glue. And although I really, really love them so much, I think, I don't think I'm going to do this again. I'm probably going to put this in my daughter's room because she really loves it. And I'm probably going to go for a more mature office on my next go around. So for the rest of the room, I have Philips Hue lighting almost everywhere. I have a light strip on my desk. I have the play bars. Um, I think I have two behind my computer and then I have two more behind my TV. So I can pretty much, I can pretty much control all the lighting, any lighting I can think of. I can do sequences, dances, et cetera, et cetera, from my phone or I can ask Siri or I can ask Alexa. On top of that, I have the Philips Hue HDMI sync box. So you plug this box into your television and then you run your inputs through the box. So like I have my Xbox going into the box or you can put, you can connect your Apple 4K TV or et cetera, et cetera, into the box. And then when you turn it on, whatever colors are on the screen, it will match the actual colors in the, to whatever lights you have connected. You can set different rooms, different zones, and then you will set the location of where the light is. So like if I have a light on this side or if I have a light on, on the left side, whatever light is on whatever side that you set in the room, that's the light that will match or correspond to the lighting on the TV. It gives a unique experience when you're watching movies or cinematic things, or you're watching a game. Again, this is probably one of my favorite things about the office and it, it really ties in all of the colors that I have going on with the lighting. So over here, I have a small prayer area that I use in the morning times or at night or just whenever I feel or whenever I just feel compelled to. So on the table, I actually have my little candles and books and devotionals that I'm currently reading. Or I might have my little journal over here or whatever things I'm just doing. And I'll sit over here in the morning times. Like I wake up at 4.30 a.m. and I'll just I might sit on my couch and just have my feet up and I'll maybe put a, um, 
you know, videos or music or sermons on the screen. And I'll just chill here. It's a really nice space that helps me unwind and just relax to start my day off right. So on to another piece about my office, that will be my couch. So I got this couch from Wayfair. It's actually not just a great place to relax and just sit down. It adds a little touch of sophistication because it's a black velvet and it actually, it will lean and turn into a day bed just in case anybody comes over or anything. It's not the most comfortable, but it does what it does. So like if I'm just tired, if I had a long day, I can just sit over here and take a nap after uh, after my work day or if i have a lot of people in the office i have enough seating for whoever's in here so in addition to all of the big things i have are my main areas that i have in my office i have a few miscellaneous things that we'll talk about all of these pretty much help tie in the big pieces together so everything matches so for instance i have this uh louis vuitton supreme black rug it's almost like a black velvet similar to the couch and it ties in the couch the desk the glass board and the TV. It's like a centerpiece merging all of them together. And also I have these black blackout curtains that I got off of Amazon. They're not like a velvet, but they're like a thick, a thick quality curtain. So these prevent distractions. They actually prevent sound. They keep the heat in, keep the cold in, whatever temperature I have. They're blackout. So when I'm filming, it helps reduce all of the excess light that distorts my images or my pictures. I have this black trash can, which is a simple piece. I mean, I needed a trash can, it was black. I got this off of Amazon, great little small piece. So I have these sound panels on the walls. The panels actually might not be large enough. Or I may not have enough of them to make an actual difference in the sound quality that I pick up, but they do add a touch of style and they're pretty cool. And then right below the sound panels, I have these glow in the dark hooks that I put my Xbox controllers and my mics and my headsets on. And then also I have this abstract lion art piece that I created with my ex-girlfriend. So we sprayed the actual piece in this dark matte black paint and we splattered it all over with a glow in the dark paint. We did, we did a lot of colors like purple, I think we did pink, yellow, green, red and some other colors but all of them are glow in the dark and then beneath the actual piece i have a, or a black light that shines on the piece and when i turn the lights down real low the actual piece shines and glows and it's it looks so good the line here pretty much serves as like the focal point of the room and again it blends in and it matches all of the colors together so overall there's really not that many things that i would change but there are some things i am looking to add into my next version of my office when i move into another um, apartment or a condo so my next desk will be very much it'll be larger than the one i currently have and i'm looking at an actual l-shaped desk maybe like an 84 inch on one side to at least a 60 or a 70 on the other side. I'm also looking at a standing desk, of course, and I want an actual wood um, top. As of right now, I'm looking at getting, um, it's like a V3 desk. I can't remember the name of it, but it's, a, it's, a, it's one of the top standing desk companies. I cannot think of the name of it right now. Hopefully I can really get this unit that I have my eye on and the next office space I make is gonna be just it's going to be one of the top offices shown on YouTube. It's going to be amazing. And then the one I do after that, that one's going to be ridiculous. So really, I'm just, I'm finding out the things that I like that I could do better. As of right now, it's nothing I really just don't like. Just small additions that I want to make or upgrades. I have mentioned that I am going to upgrade and get the max spec of the Apple Studio or the Apple Mac Pro, whichever one is the best for my needs. I will probably be editing in 8K and large AK files, so I'm probably gonna max out whatever I do. I'll probably also keep this Apple um, Mac Mini that I have and I'll put it on my secondary desk for whoever comes by. Like if my parents or a friend or whatever is over and they wanna use the computer, they can get on that one. And that's still like a beast of a computer. So for the next office space, I actually wanna go a bit cozier, a bit more grownish and less of the, the colors everywhere and all the lights and everything. So in, in addition to expanding on everything that I already have, I want to create like a sort of music area, music creation slash video podcast something area. I'm interested in making like music with uh, a bunch of instruments or I might get a DJ controller and, 
And then I'm interested in recording everything on video and I know what I want to do in my head, but I, I don't really know what I want to do. I can't vocalize it, but it's going to be pretty cool. And then again, I won't do the cloud ceiling again. I'll put that in my daughter's room. I will keep all the pieces that I have. The ceiling that I built, it's not really full. I'm going to do the entire ceiling so that you see no ceiling, but everything you see will be clouds. And I'll add some more lights in and I'll add in some more lights for her and make the clouds more in depth and more variations in the height and et cetera, et cetera. I might even spray paint some clouds like gray, light gray, white, little blue, you know, get creative with it. And that's my 2023 office tour. I hope you guys enjoy getting a peek into my workspace and all of the equipment and the personal touches that I have added into it. I do plan on moving soon from this apartment. So I will do a full video of all the rooms that I have and all of the different things that I've changed since the last video I did a few years ago. Thank you for taking the time to check out this video. And if you have any questions or comments about the workspace or any of the items that I have, again, I will have everything shown and mentioned listed in the description of this video, but leave a comment if you have any other additional questions and I'll make sure to get to it and answer it for you. But until next time, take care.